Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, we're going to create a budget app with GUI in Python. First, let's import tkinter as tk. Now let's create our class. To get started, we need to create a new window object. I'm going to do this by calling my self.root. We can initiate the window object using tk.tk. .tk. Next, we can set the size or geometry of our window. I'm also going to give it a title. Before we can run this and see how our window looks like, we need to add in one more line of code, which is self.root.main.loop. The main function of this line is to ensure that our UI is kept alive. Now we can test it out and see how our window looks like. As you can see, the title of the app is the same as what we declared in the title of the root. Next, the dimension is set accordingly to 920 times by 540. However, I don't want it to be resizable, so I'm going to add in another line of code. Let's try to run this again, and perfect. Now let's create a text box to print the output of our budget tool. Here, I'm going to create a new item called self.textbox. The text box will be a TK text item or text object in which we can set the height, the width, as well as the south, but we'll, keep, we'll do that later. Now when we try to run this, you can see that our text box is not yet drawn out in the app. That's because we haven't packed it. So to do that, all we need to do is call self.textbox and pack it. See? This doesn't look very good, but we can fix this in a bit. Since we're going to be constantly using this text box, I'm going to move it into its own function so that we can just call the function and update it whenever we need. I'm also going to take in an extra variable message. I'll show you what this does in a bit. So first, let's start with what we did. We're going to create our text box. Now, to print item on the text box object, we need to call the text box object followed by the insert function. And the index will be 1.0. For the characters, we are going to use the message that we passed in from above. Now, if we go back to our init function, we can call the self.draw function and pass in our message. For example, let's say, hello. Well, hello, welcome to our budget app. Let's run this and see what we get. So as you can see, the message was outputted. Now we can modify this to fit whatever we want since we are taking it as a variable. Now let's create some entry boxes and some buttons for our functions. Our app will have three main functions, which are to calculate budget, view our budget plan, and view our spending budget. So I will create three buttons and one entry box for us to enter our budget. I'm also going to create a new function and hold all these buttons and entry boxes within. Let's start by creating a frame to hold all these buttons and entry boxes within. So our self.frame object will be a TK frame object. We are also going to pass in the root, which is the window that we are trying to draw on, the height, and the width. Now let's create our first entry box. So the entry box will be a tk.entry object. And instead of passing in self.root, we are going to pass in self.frame since we are drawing it inside the frame object. We can also set the font for the entry box and let's say we want it to be 12. Now, let's create our first button. I'm going to call it CalBudget. So our CalBudget button will be a tk.button object. Just like the entry box, we are going to pass it in self.frame instead of self.root since we are drawing it inside the frame object. We can add in the text for our button and let's say calculate budget.
Now, we need to add comma, but since we haven't have the function created, let's just ignore this for now. And finally, we can set the width of our button. I'm just going to set it to 20. Finally, we need to pack our items before we can actually see it when we run the script. Instead of packing it one by one like this, we can add all our items into a list. So let's call our list items and let's append them into the list. So I'll add self.entry as well as self.calbudget button in it. And now for each item within our items list, we'll just do item.pack. Now let's go back to the init function and call our buttons function to see what we have created. I'm going to comment out the self.draw for the moment to see what we have created in self.buttons. As you can see, nothing showed up. This is because we didn't pack our self.frame object. I don't want to pack this because I have a text box object which I want to show on the left side and the frame on the right side. So to, in order for it to show up, we need to set the grid or the coordinates for the frame as well as the text box object. We can easily do this by going back to our buttons and our draw functions and setting the grids for our objects. So I'm going to set the frame object on row zero and column one. Meanwhile, I'm going to head back into my draw function, comment this pack line out, and then use the same grid function on our text box and set it to row zero and column zero. Now let's run it again. As you can see, we have created our entry box as well as our button. However, it doesn't actually do anything because we haven't created a function and called the command. And the pattern seems a bit off. We will fix that in a bit. So if we uncomment this line, we should be able to see our text box on the left and our buttons on the right. There, perfect. Now, it looks a bit off since the spacing isn't set correctly and there's a lot of white space, but we can fix that. Now let's go down and create all our remaining buttons. Don't forget to append them into the list so that they get packed when we run the script. Now let's try to run the script and see what we have. Perfect. All our buttons are there, but the spacing is still not nice. Let's try to fix that and add a label on top of this entry box so that people know what we are trying to do with this entry box. This entry box will mainly be used to enter our budget. So I'm going to create a label item and this will be a tk.label object. And like before, we're going to draw it inside the frame. The text would be your budget. I'm also going to move this line up so that it looks in order of what we're trying to do. First, we'll have the label and then the entry box and then our three buttons. Finally, I'm going to append it into our list of items so that it will get packed accordingly. Now, let's fix the spacing issue by adding a pad X and a pad Y. The pad X and pad Y are mainly used as padding. So the space you want to be padded needs to be set within this function. Now let's try to run the script and that looks better. Now let's go back up into our draw function and do the same for our text box. I'm also going to enclose it in a new frame object so that it is easier to manage. I'm also going to set the style to be flat and add a background color for our text box, which will be light yellow. There. Now let's try to change the font and make it bigger. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new item called style. I 
I'm going to use mono space for the font as well as font size 18. Now all I have to do is pass in where I want this style to be used. So inside our text box config, let's add in the new font and style size. Perfect. This looks so much better and easier for our users to see. Now let's create our first function. The first function that we will create is calculate budget. So what we want to do is get the budget entered on the entry box and calculate our budget available for spending. So in order to do that, we need to create a new variable to get the input from the entry box. I'm going to call mine self.budget. Since this number can have decimal points, I'm going to use type float instead of int. So all we need to do is call in our entry box and use the dot get function to get the contents within. I'm also going to set a default value if no number is entered. Next, let's calculate our spending budget by using self.budget times 0 0.5. Now we can print the output using the self draw function instead of having to create a new text box every time we run the command. I'm going to use an F string for this. So let's say our total budget would be self dot would be self dot budget. I want to make sure that this is in two decimal format, so I'm going to add in this small snippet of code which sets the format to two decimal points. Now we need to go back to our button and call this command when it is clicked. Be sure to remove this parenthesis bracket or else it will return some errors when you try to run the script. Let's try it out. Let's say we have $100 to spend. Perfect. It calculates our spending money. Now as you can see when you try to click on the text box, you can actually type stuff in it and we don't want it to be modified. So let's go back into our text box function and add in one line of code. All we have to do is disable the text box after we have inserted our message. We can simply do that by adding a config line and stating the state of the text box to be disabled. Let's try that again and see what we have. Perfect. Now we can't modify it, but we can click and copy paste the contents within our text box. Now let's work on the remaining two functions. This time, we're going to try to make our output look a bit better by using tabs. Now I'm going to add a slash T here, which stands for a tab just to make our output look a bit better and organized. Now let's go in our button, our view budget plan button, and call this function when we click the button. Let's try this out and see what we have. Awesome, this looks way much better. But as you can see, the spending money line is using up more space than the other lines. We can fix this by adding in extra tabs to make sure everything is aligned. This isn't necessary, but it just looks more pleasing to me. There, this looks way much better. Now let's work on our final function, which is the view spending budget. Now for this, I have something special in mind. I want a new pop-up window to appear and ask for users to input their rent or mortgage as well as their bills before printing the final budget out on the text box. So I'm going to head back up under buttons and create a pop-up window. Now let's go back into our view spending budget and call this pop-up function so that it creates a pop-up box when we click on it. Let's see what we have. Perfect. 
but this doesn't actually do anything because we haven't created a function to get the input or do the calculation when we click the done button. Let's create the final function, which is to calculate our spending budget. Same as before, this will be a float. But instead of using self.entry, we need to call our entry boxes from the pop-up window. So it will be self.rentEntry and those entry instead of entry. I'm also going to set a default value like how I did before so that this doesn't give us any errors when we don't pass in any numbers. Now I'm going to add in a line to destroy or close the pop-up window using self.popup.destroy. This will only destroy the pop-up window when we click the done button. So we still need to get our budget from our main entry box. I'm just going to copy out what we have before. Now all that's left for us to calculate is the food category, which is also same as our self.spending, and then minus our rent and bills. Finally, let's print our spending budget out using the self.draw function again. See how simple and easy it is for us to print the output using one function instead of having to create the text box multiple times. Now let's head back up into our pop-up window and add in this final function into our done button. Let's try to run this and see what we have created. So the first button is working, the second button is working, and finally let's check the third button. Perfect, everything is showing up just as we want. So there you have it, we have created a budget tool with GUI using Python in less than 70 lines of code. The source code for this project is available on GitHub. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Also leave a comment down below on what project should I build next. As always, thank you guys for watching and see you guys in the next video.